We at Moonshot Junior offer a holistic education through our four-stage innovator program with an outcome-focused learning and product development experience. It encompasses 360-degree entrepreneurial training by helping kids explore their area of interest and imbibe critical and life skills through hands-on experiential learning. Hi, I'm Sonia, and I'm from California, USA. As a little kid, I was always super interested in coding in Raspberry Pi. Hi, my name is Sambi Ranka. I'm 14, and I live in California, United States. I am the creator of the Fantastic Box. The mentors and subject matter experts at Moonshot Junior have a flexible outlook. This is why I was able to articulately speak in front of a broad audience in arenas such as TEDx, where I shared my thoughts about the future. Hi, my name is Anita Galgum. I love robotics. I designed and created this camera add-on module with Moonshot Junior. Hello, I'm Anthony and I'm 11 years old. Hi, I'm Martha and I'm 13 years old. And, and we live in England. Together we have written a book called The Atlantic Adventure. We are very grateful for Moonshot Junior's support during our journey. Hi, my name is Delina. I'm in seventh grade and I'm from Ontario, Canada. I made this animation to show awareness about the situation. Hi, my name is Liza Stallings and I have been studying with Moonshot Junior in their innovative program for the past few months. So far, Moonshot has been truly wonderful and I've loved getting to do fun and amazing things with my incredible instructors. Now we are starting our prototype stage for our single button RF attention reminders. My name is Shoya Malatra and the creator of the most realistic Thumbola app on the App Store. This app is one of the most realistic, if not the realistic, Thumbol app on the market. The innovative program at Moonshot allowed me to get the guidance I needed throughout the whole development life cycle of the app. We at Moonshot Junior offer a holistic education through our four-stage innovator program with an outcome-focused learning and product development experience. It encompasses 360-degree entrepreneurial training by helping kids explore their area of interest and imbibe critical and life skills through hands-on experiential learning. Hi, I'm Sonia and I'm from California, USA. As a little kid, I was always super interested in coding in Raspberry Pi. Hi, my name is Sambi Ranka. I'm 14 and I live in California, United States. I am the creator of the Fantastic Box. The mentors and subject matter experts at Moonshot Junior have a flexible outlook. This is why I was able to articulately speak in front of a broad audience in arenas such as TEDx, where I shared my thoughts about the future. Hi, my name is Anita Galgum. I love robotics. I designed and created this camera add-on module with Moonshot Junior. Hello, I'm Anthony and I'm 11 years old. Hi, I'm Martha and I'm 13 years old. And, and we live in England. Together we have written a book called The Atlantic Adventure. We are very grateful for Moonshot Junior's support during our journey. Hi, my name is Delina. I'm in seventh grade and I'm from Ontario, Canada. I made this animation to show awareness about the situation. Hi, my name is Liza Stallings and I have been studying with Moonshot Junior in their innovative program for the past few months. So far, Moonshot has been truly wonderful and I have loved getting to do fun and amazing things with my incredible instructors. Now we are starting our prototype stage for our single button RF attention reminders. My name is Shoya Malatra and the creator of the most realistic Thumbola app on the App Store. This app is one of the most realistic, if not the realistic, Thumbol app on the market. The innovative program at Moonshot allowed me to get the guidance I needed throughout the whole development life cycle of the app. Namaskaram and hello everyone. It's a pleasure to have you all here today. I'm Shruti Jain and with me here is Tirat Singh Bindra. We are here on the behalf of Moonshot Junior. I hope everyone is excited about the program. 
Before I start, I would like to thank Dave Viralapati, CEO and President of s 2 Tech, for giving Moonshot Junior this platform to meet future entrepreneurs and the problem solvers. Before we proceed with this session, I would like to inform you all that we are streaming live on YouTube also. Please visit Moonshot Junior's YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe and view such exciting and informative content. Today's session is about the role of entrepreneurship in developing nations. The community of entrepreneurs is also known as business leaders who led an economy by implementing new ideas, taking risks, and thus accelerating economic growth. We know the economy of developing nations primarily depends on agriculture. These entrepreneurs can catapult them into developed nations by revolutionizing economic growth through industrialization. We are living in an era of communication technology that is connecting the whole world. Thanks for the communication advancement. We know how these entrepreneurs have revolutionized the world. The entrepreneurs have brought a sea of change in the way we live and think with their innovative ideas and risk-taking abilities. As the information is transcending borders, so is the growth process. Entrepreneurs are providing much needed impetus to developing nation by fostering an upward change and fueling rapid economic growth. Entrepreneurs can help developing nations in creating capital formation. Capital plays a key role in production in a developing economy. Entrepreneurs augmented by mobilizing the funds, which helps in creation of wealth. The second is balanced economic development. Any business needs resources. When entrepreneurs start a business in rural and semi-urban areas, it leads to economic activities in that area. The entrepreneurs use local resources to run their businesses, and this leads to growth in the areas such as employment, infrastructure, health, education, etc. Third one, employment generation. Entrepreneurship and great contributor in employment generation. They create both direct and indirect employment opportunities with their innovative ideas. And this boosts the per capita income and hence the standard of living. And the last but not the least, self-reliance. A country becomes self-reliant when it is able to cut down import dependence and fulfills the demand with the local products. You know that entrepreneurs are integral to economic growth. Our entrepreneurship and leadership development program helps in fostering an entrepreneurial mindset. Now, Tirath will give you an outline and introduction to the entrepreneurship and leadership development program. Over to you, oh. Tirath. Thank you, Shruti. Now, I will give you an outline and introduction to the entrepreneurship and leader leadership development program. I will also walk you through the program what is what it is all about and how you will benefit from this program. Before I hand over the baton to the who's who of the entrepreneurial world, I would like to discuss a little bit about the topic. So before moving ahead, I would like to know any established or budding entrepreneurs here. So those who are the budding entrepreneurs, they can put it in the chat. Great. Hope this session helps you in further cementing your objectives. I'm saying so because this is the creative juice in all of us, but very few of us have the skills to recognize that special skill and use it. Here comes the ELDP program. The ELDP aims at fostering an entrepreneurial mindset in all of you. The entrepreneurial mindset is a critical skill set that will empower you. It will derive an entrepreneurial behavior in you and upskill you in identifying the opportunities and 
addressing the opportunity by generating products and services entrepreneurs possess a great leadership uh, leadership qualities they lead teams of competitive people and have the ability to execute challenging ideas and reinvent themselves people with an entrepreneurial mindset are seen as problem solvers they do not just solve the problem of society but they also remove the hurdles in the way of their solution and the future is all about the problem solvers another crucial skill that will that you will learn during the program is pitch making without pitch making skill it is challenging to transform opportunities and into real business now what is pitch making and why should you learn the pitch making process once you identify an opportunity the next step is to take it forward and here you would require pitch making skills in simple words pitch making is persuading your audience to invent in your idea or buy your product or services in the business world pitching or pitch making means presenting your business idea in front of potential investors or customers a pitch is a summary of your business so this course will be a step by step guide that will tell you the logical method that you can adopt to turn your ideas into a genuine product or technology or service and success, successfully present it in the front of the potential investors or buyers it will also usher you on the path of discovery of your skills and abilities it will prepare you for the future of your work and empower you to be the job creators of the future in short the intensive entrepreneurship and leadership development programs aims to introduce you to a viable sought after alternative career choice i will now let our special guest and industry experts to tell you more about the importance of an entrepreneurial mindset and this program you are you all are going to gain a lot of knowledge from these experts today so this is a quick idea about the timing for today however we are trying to hold on the timing strictly but there might be a slight variation in the timings now i would like to introduce mr d virlapati ceo and president of s2 tech to kick off the session he augmented his philanthropist work through the fortune fund he founded the non non profit fortune fund in 2001 the firm operates in the us and india the fortune fund provides scholarship and support for the rural children we would like to extend our gratitude to mr vilapati and fortune fund for sponsoring this program over to you sir thank you tirad <clears throat> welcome everyone um, my name is dev vilapati um, and as um, you all seen this is a, a life changing program uh, this uh, entrepreneurship and uh, leadership program is going to change your lives Uh, i will start off uh, my session with a couple of pictures i want to show uh, how many of you know the people in this uh, the left side the the young man that's shaking hands with kennedy so uh, that's that was the bill clinton that's the president of uh, he was the president of the united states uh, some time ago and he was uh, at the age of 16 uh, he met uh, kennedy and uh, he shook hands and and that was in 1963 july uh, july uh, 1963 and after then he said one day i want to be i want to get that job so that's what uh, he just you know as said to the friends and others uh, uh, traveling with him said uh, one day i want to be uh, like kennedy so it's 16 years age and i want to show you one more picture um this is uh, neil armstrong in 1969 and it's a, he is the first one who landed on the moon and at that time i was about 11 years old so when uh, armstrong landed on the moon i was about 11 years old and and the news about uh, you know uh, americans landing on the moon or armstrong landing on the moon was splashed around all across the world including the newspapers in india and also it was in the radio 
Then I said, hmm, Isamun was a, a something fascination special in our minds, right? Growing up. Uh, so somebody from America actually went to the moon and landed on the moon. Wow, this country must be great. Uh, you know, I want to visit that country one day. And I was about 11 years old. And that thought that I won't be going to this country at 11 years old kind of germinated into me coming to United States. And Clinton, 16 years old, not knowing what's all involved to become a president of the country. And, and also Clinton's father died three months before he was actually born. So he was actually without a biological a father. And his mother was alcoholic. Brother was drug addict, but he had the desire. I want to be president of the country. 16 years old with so many handicaps, so many disadvantages, he had that desire that, okay, I want to be the president. And 11 years old boy growing up sees the Armstrong. I said, I want to be, you know, uh, actually at that time I thought, just thought I want to visit the country. But now I actually ended up in the United States. So what I like you to think is um, think big and think with the wonder and anything is possible. If you want to be something at your age, anything is possible. And I just showed you two examples of you know, things that are happening. So a couple of uh, things I like to uh, say, those who have accomplished great things have some great habits. You know, I've seen people who are very, very successful, they, they do yoga. I think uh, one of the advantage you all have uh, growing up in and studying in Isha school system is you learn yoga. So I love you to, you know, have the, uh, do the yoga practices every day. I'll come to it a little bit later, how that will help you. And the people who are very, very successful, they also read a lot. Sadhguru, for example, that you all know, he spent one full year reading the entire library, whatever book he could get in that one year. He got it and he read it. Bill Gates reads a lot. Elon Musk reads a lot. So reading, reading, reading is the, you know, another habit that I would uh, encourage you to develop. Then the third one is mentors. If you want to become somebody, seek out them take their help, take their advice. So some of you already met, uh, I think in the last week, Aruna Bahugana, right? The IPS officer, the first female uh, IPS officer in Andhra Pradesh. You saw how her life journey started and uh, how she, uh, what kind of difficulties she went through. And you also met Desh Pandey. Some of you actually inter interacted with Desh Pandey when he uh, talked to you all. So you saw his life. He was born in a rural Karnataka, but had this desire to, you know, go to uh, United, I mean, the, uh, do the, I think he went to Canada first and then came to United States. So he wanted to have a desire to go to, uh, abroad to study and, um, and so sought the mentors uh, in the research and and when you found the opportunity to connect the computers at the faster speed and uh, he was able to uh, get the mentorship and the team and the people and so he was able to build those routers that transmit the data now we are talking because of those routers that Desh Pandey and his uh, organization built so seek the mentors um, uh, that that would uh, really help. So be service oriented. I think uh, the most important thing is most entrepreneurs are more service oriented. They want to help people by solving the problems. 
So that's the kind of problem solving service oriented mindset is important. So with this Moonshot Junior program, we are bringing the whole Silicon Valley to your doorstep. You don't have to come to Silicon Valley to uh, start a business. So most of the businesses like you saw uh, Apple, Facebook, Google, Intel, and even Moonshot Junior are all based in Silicon Valley. So you could come to Silicon Valley, uh, live there and absorb all that culture mindset. It's a very expensive process. Uh, at least $100,000, it will cost you 70, 74 lakhs. But we are bringing that Silicon Valley mindset, culture, and all that to your doorstep, to your smartphone, to your tablet. So you could uh, you know, learn it. So take this advantage of this program. Um, you know, I know you all have some exams and other things, but this is only nine weeks. If you can take uh, interest in this and learn this, it will change your life. So the couple of things I would say, you know, attendance is very important. If you don't attend, you can't learn. If you, can, if you don't read the book, you can't learn. Same way here, you must determine that, okay, no matter what, I will attend all the sessions. You have to do it yourself. Nobody should force it. If you have the inspiration to change the world, if you want to uh, solve the problems around you, and if you make the world better, this is the opportunity for you to you know, alone and make that happen. So attend all classes and also not only attend, participate, ask questions. If you don't ask question, the, the teacher or instructor uh, won't know uh, what's in your mind. So ask questions. And we also have the mentoring program going on with uh, our Estutech employees. We formed uh, the whole batch of 102 students, I guess, so into six groups and each group is added by a mentor or is uh, mentored by a mentor from the United States. So learn to interact with them. The students in the United States are big thinkers because in our constitution, it says everybody is created equal. So they don't have any worries about where they are born, which caste they are born, which religion they are born, whether they are born in South, North, East, West, doesn't matter. Everybody is created equal and they also think big. So learn to interact with them and attend those mentoring classes. So you will also develop that attitude of thinking big and, and unbounded thinking, creative thinking. Uh, so those kind of things, fearlessness, all those things you will learn interacting with these uh, mentors. So uh, the bootcamp is also the, uh, we are doing it because you will get a lot of US-based speakers as part of this bootcamp. So we want you to acclimatize to their accent and to the way of talking so that the, you start interacting with these mentors for two weeks, then you will actually slowly ease into that accent uh, from the US speakers. So you will get used to that. So, and they'll also make sure that you talk more. Uh, you're not sitting there, uh, not asking questions. So we're also doing the Toastmaster session to help you come out of your shell. So attend the Toastmaster sessions, give at least one speech, okay? Now we are trying to see if we can get the inner engineering program to all of you. I I'm hope I'll be successful. Um, there are some requirements for the, there for inner engineering. So we'll figure it out. If you're 17, I'm hoping that we will try to get you inner engineering. It's a, uh, the, the yoga, the, the, there are Shambhavi that uh, you, you probably, some of you have learned. It's all included in that. And if you do inner engineering every day, you could have a desire, whatever may be the desire, and it will manifest itself. The whole universe will work um, to manifest that desire. So it's real, the inner engineering works. It actually, we have, uh, uh, I have offered that inner engineering program to 
all my employees in the United States and all my employees in India, and they are more happy, contented, joyful, and their, you know, their desires are just coming uh, true, uh, coming to real uh, without having to a lot of sweat and all that. Now, I want to sh share Uh, one example of uh, I really wanted to have a one on one conversation with the uh, Sadhguru. So I wanted to have that one on one conversation with Sadhguru. And, you know, getting to meet Sadhguru these days itself is a huge, uh, uh, difficult challenge because Sadhguru is so busy and yes, travels a lot. He talks to me, meets people, talks to people. He's been involved in multiple programs. So his time is very, very valuable. So just meeting him itself is a big challenge. On top of it, I had this desire that I want to interview him like uh, Hollywood uh, actresses have uh, interviewed him. Um, Ju Juhi uh, Chawla and then uh, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, Hollywood, Bollywood, uh, uh, not Hollywood, Bollywood actresses all uh, interviewed him. So I wanted to do that one day. And so it happened. Last week, I was able to spend one hour with uh, Sadhguru and talked about entrepreneurship. And uh, I asked some of your questions. There are 500 questions were there. All of some of you have, uh, you know, gave those questions. So I asked those questions and Sadhguru answered uh, coming alive uh, on YouTube in September. So this is an example of manifestation. You know, when you have a desire and all your body, mind, emotion, life, energy all synced up, whatever you desire, the whole universe works to make that happen. And here, uh, when I wanted to talk to Sadhguru, Desh Pandey agreed. He said, I will do it. And uh, so myself, Desh Pandey, we uh, you know, were able to talk to Sadhguru and I was able to talk to both of them to get some things out of about the entrepreneurship. I think you all, you all need to watch that one hour program. It's very inspiring. I think uh, it will change your life. So what uh, I want to leave is just like, you know, the 16 year old boy who met uh, President Kennedy and wanted to become a president or 11 year boy who saw Armstrong on the moon and wanted to go to United States, just have those kind of uh, wonders and, and uh, desires or intentions and things will happen to you. Life will change. You become an impactful person. You will change the world. You will make the world better. I think, uh, compared to what Bill Clinton went through his family life. Most of you have a very strong families. You have both mom and dad, most cases. And whereas he didn't have dad, he did, he, his mother was alcoholic. Uh, stepfather was uh, abusive, beating him most of the times. Even in that circumstances, he had this desire to become a president, he became one. So it's all depends on you. You are limited by your own imagination and dream. If your dream is small, you become that. If your dream is big, you become that. Either way, you're good. You, your dreams come true. So with all that, um, I, I wish you all success. I wish you all good luck. And this is going to be a life-changing program. So attend all the classes, participate, and have big dreams. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dave. Now, before we go to our next speaker, I would like to share a short video. We at Moonshot Junior offer a holistic education through our four-stage innovator program with an outcome-focused learning and product development experience. It encompasses 360-degree entrepreneurial training by helping kids explore their area of interest and imbibe critical and life skills through hands-on experiential learning. 
Hi, I'm Sonia, and I'm from California, USA. As a little kid, I was always super interested in coding in Raspberry Pi. Hi, my name is Sambi Ranka. I'm 14, and I live in California, United States. I am the creator of the Fantastic Box. The mentors and subject matter experts at Moonshot Jr. have a flexible outlook. This is why I was able to articulately speak in front of a broad audience in arenas such as TEDx, where I shared my thoughts about the future. Hi, my name is Anitez Galdum. I love robotics. I designed and created this camera add-on module with Moonshot Jr. Hello, I'm Anthony and I'm 11 years old. Hi, I'm Martha and I'm 13 years old. And, and we live in England. England. Together we have written a book called The Atlantic Adventure. We are very grateful for Moonshot Junior's support during our journey. Hi, my name is Delina. I'm in seventh grade and I'm from Ontario, Canada. I made this animation to show awareness about the situation. Hi, my name is Liza Stallings and I have been studying with Moonshot Junior and their innovative program for the past few months. So far, Moonshot has been truly wonderful and I've loved getting to do fun, amazing things with my incredible instructors. Now we are starting our prototype stage for our single button RF attention reminders. My name is Shoya Malatra and the creator of the most realistic Thumbola app on the App Store. This app is one of the most realistic, if not the realistic, Thumbola app on the market. The innovative program at Moonshot allowed me to get the guidance I needed throughout the whole development life cycle of the app. Coming up next, we have Moonshot Jr. CEO and co-founder Alok Jain to kick off this session. He is the co-founder and CEO of Moonshot Jr. Inclusive. Alok has four companies on his list of accolades. His latest venture, Moonshot Jr. Inclusive, aims to guide children to gain knowledge in technology, soft skills and entrepreneurship to prepare them for the future of the world. Over to you, sir. Thanks, Shruti, and uh, thanks, Day. I think uh, what an inspirational uh, session. So uh, my name is Alok, uh, Alok Jain, and I'm co-founder and CEO of Moonshot Junior. I'm thrilled to share uh, the ELDP or entrepreneurship and leadership development program with each of you. So. And really, before I dive in, uh, uh, I'd like to say uh, uh, my gratitude uh, to our collaborators, the, of course, the Isha Foundation, the Isha Vidya and Isha Home School, but also to RJUKT, uh, SVU and Sri Padmavati uh, Vishwavidyalam, and also to our uh, sponsor, uh, uh, Day Fortune Fund and s 2 Tech. Without them, this ELDP program wouldn't have been possible. So at Moonshot Junior, as you guys know, we are a Silicon Valley company. We are really in the business of building and nurturing future entrepreneurs and innovators. Uh, we are an outcome-focused experiential learning. Uh, we provide hands-on experience of product building and also help uh, fundraising uh, the, the, the groups and candidates who have good products. So what we are really solving, we Industry 4.0 is here. If you see, Everything revolves around tech from AR, VR to robotics to IOTs and uh, uh, system integration and so on. But not only the industry is changing, but the nature of job is also changing. Now they are already uh, forecasting that by 2030, the, our current Gen Zs, when they go in the job market, first they are going to lead the job market, but also they are going to see 15 to 20 different uh, jobs and careers in their lifetime. So, what's really happening? the gig economy and uh, freelancing is going to take over. If you look at the India per se numbers, by 2030, about 50% of the high schoolers, they will lack the experience uh, to get a job. So this is really a wake up call and that's where our attempt is. Um, so through ELDP, we call it a life-changing experience. We are going to bring you global leaders, entrepreneurs, VCs and so on. But before I dive in, really like to share uh, who are these entrepreneurs? Uh, what is the definition? And if you look at uh, Sadhguru, he says the entrepreneurs, they draw the greatest joy because they have chosen what they really want to do. 
they have chosen their passion as their work. Uh, if you look at the Des Deshpande, one of the inspirational leader, and they spoke highly about him. He says that first, as a person, you have to observe the world and really see there are thousands of things they can be better. So when there are thinkers, they will think about it and don't do anything. But as an entrepreneur, they really make it happen. The entrepreneurs might not have much mean, they might not have resources, money, knowledge, but they have that fire to make it happen. And they share several examples like uh, uh, Bill Clinton and, and, and many more. So, and, and these are really, I mean, if you look at the history, whether you look at global market, US and India, most of them come from humble background, very, very humble background. More than 50% of them has been like that. Even if you look at the billionaires and all kinds of things, go in their background, you will find uh, uh, their starting point. I myself come from a very small and humble background uh, in the middle of India, the place called Damo. So entrepreneurs are really the solution creators and problem solvers versus the critic. I mean, we all get frustrated with the day-to-day -day life. But the entrepreneurs take that frustration and those issues and problems and turn them into the opportunities. Uh, really, not every entrepreneur is going to create a rocket science or, or a rocket technology, but they're able to understand the minute change. Sometimes a very little subtle change um, can really bail out an entire community, village, and much bigger phenomena. And entrepreneurs are really the, the solo dancers who can inspire others. I'm sure. Many of you may, may have watched these videos, how to start a dance on a beach on YouTube. Watch those. It's really one or two percent start and then entire beach becomes with them. So all these big names from Narayan Murthy to Ajim Premji to Sridhar Bimbo, I'm sure we all have heard uh, them. They have done incredible work. Uh, they brought India to the global map, built tens of billion dollars of companies, employees, hundreds of thousands of employees. But lately we are seeing a big shift now, India is producing one of the largest unicorns. Uh, we are already a home to 43 unicorns, but the pace is accelerating like anything. Um, and the other thing we are seeing, 20 years ago, this was not happening. Um, uh, when you are really building big companies, uh, it was not really uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the control of the youngest. But lately, a lot of startups, a uh, lot of unicorns, they are built by people in early uh, uh, 20s even, uh, and then 30s. This was not happening. There are a lot of atmosphere has changed. The funding atmosphere has changed, especially in places like India, but also the technology world has changed. Something which used to take $5 million to do 20 years ago, it takes only one-tenth of that, sometimes even cheaper. And incredible stories coming out of uh, uh, India. I mean, the Baiju's, it's not the largest ad tech in India, it's the largest ad tech in the world. Um, it was already valued uh, $16 billion. But today, if you see, in last couple of months, it's changed and now it's over $21 billion. Um, it has impacted 40 million students uh, in, in, in an annual basis. And it's already have over 25,000 employees. And early this year, its numbers are much bigger. Uh, and then they are on an acquisition spree. So it's not an Indian success story. It's a global success story. They have acquired $2 billion worth of businesses in last few months alone. And if you go back to uh, Ravindran's uh, story, um, he really started teaching the business school aspirants uh, um, early on, but then he realized there is a gap of basic skills, really, which started math and science. Start building apps, 2015 was the first app, and then rest is history. Um, Zeroza, I'm sure you guys have heard uh, Nitin and Nikhil's story. Incredible story. I mean, this is one of its kind in the, in the, in the world. They did not raise any capital, started by themselves uh, and uh, uh, Nitin, he in the initial days was also working in a call center. Today, the company worth over $2 billion. Uh, find out how many $2 billion companies are there, which really uh, took the bootstrap route. Um, they, they have over 5 million active users and 1,400 employees. So again, this is not an Indian success story. This is a global success story. Something like this never hap happened. And, and now we are hearing all these things. Um, Ola, Ola Caps and Ola Electric, the concepts which like Uber in US, uh, 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 Bhavish and Ankit took it to India, create an incredible company and uh, impacted the 7,000 employees life. But that's very small number. Think about the entrepreneurs they have created. 15 lakhs uh, 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 cab or taxi drivers are there who are supporting at least 50 lakhs, if not more uh, family members. And now 
they want to bring this whole Ola electrics, what Tesla did to the cars, now they are going to do for the scooters. And they are building the scooters in one of the largest facility, not in India, anywhere on the planet, and want to take it forward. The solution is not only going to be in India. They have a huge export plan where they are going to supply these scooters to the rest of the globe. Um, Oyo, I'm sure you have heard uh, his uh, uh, Ritesh story. He is today only 26 years old. And uh, when he started, he was only 70, 17,000 employees. And again, you can stay in an Oyo hotel and you can play in an Oyo casino in Las Vegas. So an Indian success story, but now they are going global. So why the entrepreneurs are crucial now? They have been always uh, very important, but uh, changing industry. Um, now we are almost in an era where everybody needs to establish their own brand. Industry 4.0 is that way. The future of job, the way if you look at 10, 15 years ahead, I think each of us need to build our own brand. Um, a, a lot of automation is coming. The service industry, which was huge in India, uh, call centers, uh, back office work, all that. Um, I think it is going to start shrinking. So really to keep the engine on, uh, this is one of the most crucial elements. And uh, if you look at the global data, also the economic, uh, what they suggest that the countries which has higher entrepreneurial activity has a much stronger uh, economic overall growth. And we all need it uh, as a, the country with uh, so big population. But beside that, the entrepreneurs are also responsible for breakthrough or disruptive living. So 20 years ago, when I came here, what was offered in India versus today, whether you are looking to book a hotel or cab or uh, ordering food, I think the experience is not at par with the US. I think the experience in India is a lot better, but there are still a thousand of other challenges which need to be resolved. And that's why the role of entrepreneurs becomes a lot more crucial. Um, India's Sonicons, I mean, these are the companies who has hundreds of million dollar of uh, 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 market worth today, and they are on the path of becoming unicorn. And there is a long, long list of Indian unicorns. So really, with this ELDP program, we are going to bring you uh, world leaders. Um, uh, you will gain experiential, by experiential learning, you will be able to identify a problem uh, you will be able to put together a practical solution with the help of our mentors and subject matter experts. And really, you will put together a business plan around that. Uh, you will also identify the team members and take that idea forward. You will have an opportunity to interact with the global leaders uh, from US, UK, Canada, UAE, and of course, India. These are successful business owners, entrepreneurs, VCs, TEDx speakers, and so on. Uh, in the end of this program, you will be able to develop leadership skills communication skills, social skills, and a lot more. And uh, you will have started the journey of developing an entrepreneurial and innovative mindset. I just want to make sure that not everybody should become entrepreneur uh, and not everybody will become entrepreneur. That may not be the right thing to do, but having an entrepreneurial and innovative mindset is crucial uh, to get a good job in future. And as I said, like uh, the full-time job will start depleting. So unless you have an entrepreneurial and innovative mindset, uh, just to survive in a future job market, it will become more and more difficult. So these are the skills which everybody should possess just to prep themselves for the future. And the participant will get exposure to Silicon Valley, UK, UAE, Bangalore, and overall global work culture. Um, this is really a hands-on experience of developing and delivering a business pitch, which is really a starting point when you are building uh, your entrepreneurial journey, your business journey. So, but that's not it. We are going to bring uh, or, or our, our sponsor um, a lot of fabulous prizes for the winning teams and individuals. And there is a lot more. The teams who has a good idea and will have a practical solutions will have opportunity to realize their product or business through our nine to 12 months incubator program. In the end of this program, you can literally become a subject, uh, a, a business, a small business owner. So really, I'd like to conclude here. Uh, this is the time for India. There is a lot of acceleration. There is a lot of funding available. And if you look at the geopolitical issues right now, there are a lot of issues happening in other parts of the world, like China. If you see what had happened in last few months in their financial market. So there is a lot of capital flowing to India 
and uh, next few years are going to be golden uh, for india and you guys are really at the forefront of it so with that i really love to invite uh, the next speaker uh, uh, ken burke he is a global leader he is a serial entrepreneur has built several successful startup uh, one of his company market life uh, it was over 100 million dollar e-commerce platform huge success story in its peak time uh, the market live it used to do a 2 billion dollar in uh, transaction annually uh, today he's running entrepreneur now uh, network and microcasting network where he's inspiring thousands of entrepreneurs like me i have been fortunate to have a personal mentorship uh, from ken for last uh, many years he has been my advisor in my last company as well and really without any further ado I'd like to hand over the baton to uh, uh, Ken. Great, and hello everyone. Thanks, Alok, uh, so much uh, as well. Just wanna make sure you're all seeing my screen here. Uh, very excited to uh, be presenting to you today. So uh, thank you so much. It's a little bit early here on the uh, West Coast. I'm here in San Francisco, a little bit foggy out today or very foggy <laughs> as it is the case in the summertime. But I am thrilled to be talking to all of you today. And, and have been, it's just been a, a, a thrill of mine to work with Alok and the great people at Moonshot Junior as well uh, to be able to bring education, entrepreneurial education to uh, really the world and the youth of the world as well. I'm going to talk today about developing an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, and I think this is absolutely critical. I'll tell you just very briefly, Alok gave you my story, uh, but this is actually me uh, on the cover of one of our very popular magazines when I was just starting out. Uh, and this was in my first year or two of being a business, first year really. And it really proves the fact that we were able to start a business. This is a, a magazine that great companies are started for a thousand dollars or less. Uh, and this is, the, uh, this, is, this is a true story. Uh, in fact, my company, uh, Market Live, was started for, I think it was probably five or $600, as the article states, uh, in here. And it's true that you can build massive companies. Uh, as Alok said, we did over $2 billion in online commerce. Uh, and we were one of the leaders, if not one of the leaders, if not the leader, in, um, in, uh, in uh, e-commerce software back when Amazon didn't even exist. <laughs> Believe it or not, there was a time when Amazon didn't exist. And we did uh, very early on. And we rode through a lot of good times in the industry and even some bad times, but we survived. Uh, and when you survive through it, and, and that's what entrepreneurs do. That's one of the mindsets of an entrepreneur is being able to survive. And that's some of the things I'm gonna teach you today, by the way, I'm very excited to talk about I'm going to give you five to seven to eight different tips on, um, uh, on how to think as an entrepreneur as well. I won't bore you with the rest of my background, but I was able to take that $1,000 uh, and uh, got the entrepreneur bug very early uh, in my life as well. Uh, even prior to that, I was delivering newspapers. As a, in the olden days, we used to actually deliver newspapers uh, and work my way up. Uh, that was my own little business back when I was 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 years old. I delivered a couple hundred newspapers a day. And it was my own little business because we'd have to go and collect money from each individual subscriber and pay our bill and all of those things. It was a great education back in the day. Now, you guys have so much more advantage than we did back then because you have access to so much uh, information. And literally, 15, 16, 17, 14 years old, you can be starting your business. That's how I got started uh, back, in, back in the day. And today, uh, you can get started that way as well. Well, I grew my $1,000 uh, uh, startup uh, where I just took a little bit of my, my money right after college. Uh, I didn't have any money. I had graduated from college. And as you know, here in the United States, college is very expensive. So I was very poor <laughs> right after college. I had no money. And uh, I started my company and we grew and grew and grew over 21 years to $2 billion in sales for our customers. Uh, and now today I'm in the e-learning uh, business as well. So I want to share with you first just a couple of things. First, entrepreneurs are everywhere. 67% of people worldwide are entrepreneurs in some form. And that was what Alok said earlier about the gig economy, that, that the world has shifted and we're, we're turning all into entrepreneurs. But I do want to share with you that, that there are different types of entrepreneurs out there. First of all, I want to ask you a quick question. We don't have time for a poll question, but just answer this question in your head. Uh, do you want to be an entrepreneur someday? Uh, yes or no? You're not sure. Uh, and, and not being sure is okay as well. 
Uh, but if you want to be an entrepreneur, I will tell you, uh, in a recent survey, 82% of, of kids your age, uh, 12 to 18, 82% said they want to be an entrepreneur. So that would be the majority uh, of folks out there wanting to be an entrepreneur. So the world has changed. Your, you know, your parents and what they did, uh, and they went and got jobs at big companies or small companies. Uh, today, that's not the world that we live in. Today, everybody's starting a business. Uh, and you want to be with that business as well. There's a lots of different types of entrepreneurs I just wanted to share with you. There are freelancers, just you. You can be your own entrepreneur. You could be a designer or a computer programmer working by yourself. You're a one-person company. And we call that solopreneur, by the way. That's the name, solopreneur. And, it just, and that can be a great career and wonderful. But as the earlier speaker said, you might want to think bigger. Uh, into small businesses, just one to five employees uh, where you're doing, you're doing something could be a retail store, what have you. And that's a great way to get started as well. A startup between five and 100 employees where you're really getting started. Startups can even be two or 300 employees, 400 employees as well. Uh, and then a growing business up to maybe a thousand employees where you're really, you've got investors and you've got, uh, uh, even in a startup, you might have investors as well. Um, but a growing business is really just, it's, it's got everything working. It's figured itself out. And that's one of the keys to running a business is you get started with something and you keep just playing with it and playing with it until you get it right. And these are the types of businesses that get it right. And then you scale the business and then ultimately you can be a unicorn as well. So keep all of that in mind as you can be anything that you want. You don't have to start and say, I want to be a unicorn. You can be a you can have big dream big. That's great but you gotta start somewhere. So don't get overwhelmed with the fact of, how do I become a unicorn? That's not necessarily what you need to be. There's a continuum and just get started with what you can do and learn and learn and learn and get that entrepreneurial mindset. So I'm gonna give you the top five lessons every entrepreneur must know. Uh, I'm actually gonna throw in a couple of bonuses. Now these are great lessons. So I really want you to listen. Uh, listen carefully because these are gonna these are gonna help guide you. And this is just some of the little bit of the stuff that you start learning at Moonshot Junior as well. But you create your own definition of success. There, so this is very important. This is lesson number one, right? You determine what you mean by being successful. It doesn't necessarily have to be that you're a unicorn. Sure, you can dream to be a unicorn, and yes, you can, in fact, be a unicorn or a a sunicorn. I have not heard that before. That's a new term for me. Um, but 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 I want to make sure that your definition of success is not your friends, is not your friends' definition of success. You're doing what they want you to do. Not even your parents' definition of success or your grandparents' definition of success. While they're very influential and very important, there's no question. It needs to come from you. It needs to come inside of you. Whatever your passion is, you can turn into a business. We'll talk about that in just a second. No one should define success for you except for you. And what I mean by that is get a really good, to be a really great entrepreneur, the first thing you got to do is you got to fix what's going on up here. And, 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 and in doing that, you have to get really clear on what you want to do. The clearer that you are, the more focused that you are, the clearer that you are on what you want to do, the more likelihood of success that you'll have. But I also want you to define it. It could be that I just want to be a gig employee and that's your definition of success. Great. Let's still learn these skills to be an entrepreneur. Let's say I want to be a, a seller on Amazon or I want to own a brand, a beauty brand, a, a, a video game. Uh, I want to be a video game developer, uh, whatever it might be. That's what you can do. Right. Uh, and so that's very, very important. Lesson number two is turn your passion into a business. Identify your talents and passions. And what I mean by that is I want you to find inside what really you really enjoy doing. And you can do just jot down on a piece of paper. I really enjoy doing this. This is what I want to turn my business into. Don't try to create a business on something that doesn't excite you. So, you know, as an example, I might not, I might not like um, uh, rock climbing. Uh, so I don't want to start a business rock climbing. I think it's dangerous. Now, I like other things, but I don't like rock climbing. Maybe I like going to the beach. Well, maybe I should start a business near the beach. Or maybe I like playing video games. There's a lot of, uh, or maybe I like YouTube and I want to do something around YouTube or YouTube videos. Maybe I like media and that is exciting or podcasting. Uh, maybe I just like digital advertising or I like to be creative. What's your passion? So if you're really creative and you like doing something like design, don't start a business that everybody says, oh, that will make money. Because if you don't like it, 
it's not going to make money. It won't be what you really enjoy. You'll go in and you'll, 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 you won't like doing it. So go find something. If you like making cakes, as an example, we like baking cakes or pastries, then become the best cake maker and pastry maker uh, that exists, right? That can be a wonderful business as well. I just literally last night for a, a very special birthday bought uh, 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 having a cake design uh, from scratch. And this, this, this cake designer is incredible. But do you know how much her cakes cost? About $250. It's a very special birthday, a very special cake, custom design. She's an artist, right? That's her passion. I was able to talk to her literally yesterday uh, about this. And, and, and she's built it into a very substantial business, designing wonderful cakes. If that's your passion, that was her passion when she was a child, her mom inspired that in her, then that's what you want to do, okay? Identify your passions and talent. Figure out also what you're good at. Ask yourself, what am I really good at? Well, because what you're good at is usually what you enjoy. Lesson number three, I hope these are helpful. I just want to get your brain going and thinking about what can make you wonderful, unique, special, and different. Uh, be focused. All right, now this is a really important one. As entrepreneurs, we tend, and I am one of them, we tend to be defocused. We tend to want to go out there and we, and we, and we say, we can do this and we can do this and we can serve this market. And the world is our market. Well, maybe the world is your market, but the better that when you're getting started and, and, and even when you're a real big business as well, um, be really good at one thing to get started and then expand from there. We call it land and expand. You land somewhere and then you expand, right? It's actually better to be a specialist than a generalist, as an example. So I oftentimes use the example, I mean, you're just better at what you do when you're a specialist. So uh, if you had a medical, uh, me something medically wrong in, your, in inside of you, would you rather go to somebody that's performed the operation a thousand times or 10,000 times? Or would you rather go to a generalist that says, yeah, I've done that once or twice and yeah, you know, I'll fix you up just fine. Yeah, no, I think I want to go to the specialist that knows it better than anybody else. That's what people are looking for today. Alok said it earlier, and I want to reinforce that as well, that the more you know in one specific area, he said it a little differently, but this is what I heard, is that the more you focus in one specific area, you get really good at it. You become an expert at it, and then you can go in and, and, and expand more. You shouldn't try to serve everybody. So uh, somebody that buys your product that's 21 years old, uh, that might be a male in 21, is very different then somebody, the way they think is different, how they buy is different, what excites them is different than somebody that buys a product that is a, a 70 years old uh, and a female. They're just two different audiences. So if you're trying to be a generalist, you say, I can, my product can serve everyone. Well, that's probably true, but at least focus in on what you can do. The more focused you are, the more you can charge for your product as well. Specialists make a lot more money than generalists, generally speaking because they, their product is very focused. All right, next slide. Uh, and next lesson as well. I hope that was helpful. Remember to be focused. I know that as an entrepreneur, we're not. All right, this is an important one. Cre act, your action creates momentum. Here's what I want you to do. You need to take action every day towards being an entrepreneur, whether it's learning something, reading something, reading a book on an entrepreneur, reading a book on business, um, uh, reading something that's inspirational to you, reading maybe a personal development book, or, or even just, a, 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 and I don't mean in a day, you don't have to read it in a day, um, but whatever that is, that is what, uh, and, and so that action, a, a lot of times when I'm ready to start a new business, and I, I'm a serial entrepreneur, which means I start many businesses, I don't just start one, I start by going to my keyboard and I start researching. So my action is when I'm trying to figure out what I want to do, I start Googling and I start finding different things. That's what I want you to do, whether it's or I write something down or I write a strategy down or I just take notes uh, uh, or I type into my computer, whatever it is. Or maybe if you're a programmer, as an example, I might just start programming something, Raspberry Pi or building a component or building an, uh, an electronic, whatever it might be. Just play around with it. You don't have to be serious right out of the gate. Or if you want to be a, a, a pastry chef, then start baking cakes, right? In the kitchen, experimenting, messing around, or you want to be a chef or a designer, start designing, right? Whatever it is, that's where you want to put your energy. And every time you do that, what happens is you create momentum. You start doing something, it gets bigger, it gets bigger, it gets bigger. And then you look back and you say, 
wow, I have a really big business. Let me give you a quick example. I remember starting in e-commerce in 1995, before e-commerce really existed. We had one server in the back room that used to go down all the time, by the way, and for days, <laughs> because that was okay. It was connected to a phone wire, right? That was our e-commerce setup. We went from that one computer to about 5,000 powerful computers by the time I sold the company. That was, but we started with that one little computer. That momentum then gained us just a massive data center. Uh, and we were actually, uh, for a number of years, one of uh, Amazon's uh, uh, biggest e-commerce site collectively. Uh, be, not to them, we weren't as their size, but we all of our, our sites together. All right, oh, we've got another really important lesson. I'm running out of time, uh, but I do want to tell you, become a thought leader. Alok mentioned this as well. Become a thought leader in your field. Because what you want to do is you want to be an expert. So now you be saying, Ken, that might take years or decades for me to become an expert. I want to start now. I guarantee you that you are already an expert in what you're passionate in, where your talents lie. I can't play the piano, but somebody that can play the piano, as an example, has a lot more knowledge than I do about playing the piano and can teach me. I'm sure each and every one of you listening out there right now can teach me something that I don't know because it's not my area of expertise. If you focused on it, if you develop some knowledge, yes, you may not be the world's leading expert in something, but you can still be a thought leader and then communicate your expertise because the more that you're a thought leader, the more that your personal brand and expertise comes up, this is very important now, the more you put it out there, the more you're gonna get back, okay? And so, so, so be thinking about writing an article, um, doing a podcast, doing some videos and posting them on YouTube or other sites. That's going to start the wheel going. Uh, and then you're going to get more and more people interested. And all of a sudden, people are going to look to you as the expert. I guarantee it. And whatever you know now, that is what it is. All right, a couple of bonus lessons. I'm out of time. Uh, you must be in the game to win the game. Be patient. All I can say here is, is uh, when I say you got to be in the game, that sometimes it takes a while. It doesn't happen overnight sometimes. So stay in the game. If you're in the game, you can actually win. If you're on the sidelines, you will never win. Um, have a big vision that excites people. So you can start off big and you can tell the universe and shout, I want to do this. Reach for the stars and you may just land on the moon. What I mean by that is reach really high. If you reach really high, you're going to land somewhere that's high. But if you reach low, I guarantee you, you're going to reach someplace low. The, the, the speaker before me, not a low, but the other gentleman said this, you can dream small, you can dream big. The vision is about dreaming big. Doesn't necessarily mean you always have to hit that huge vision, right? But you're going to do a lot better. And if you're stuck or overwhelmed, my last piece of advice for you, break it down into small bite-sized pieces. When you get overwhelmed with something, and entrepreneurs oftentimes do, make sure you just step, take a step back. And take it and just break it down into small bite-sized pieces and take a little action there. All right, I'm going to hand it back because my time is up. I'm going to hand it back to our wonderful people at Moonshot Junior. I do want to thank you all so much uh, for, I hope I've been able to give you just one or two great ideas that you can go and take action on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ken, for such an amazing session. Thank you. Now, moving next, we have with us uh, Mr. Freedom Techni. Freedom is the founding principal of Ipkani Early College Charter School. He's also the CEO of Event, Invent XR Education. He's working towards providing equal opportunities for quality education for all. An educationist at heart, he collaborates with world-renowned inventors, academics, and researchers from elite institutions to develop accessible infrastructure and services to boost exponential learning. So I would like to hand it over to Mr. Freedom Chetan. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, um, you are able to, uh, to see my screen over here. Um, you know, one of the things that I actually really, really love about what Moonshot Thinking is about, it's really about changing the status quo. What does it take to be a moonshot thinker. You know, we just had a wonderful conversation around entrepreneurship. Uh, hey, Freedom, and I'm not sure if your camera is on. Okay. Uh, I, but can you hear me okay, though? 
because I uh, yeah we can hear yeah. you but we cannot you know, see you. You know, I might need to actually restart this because I cannot start the video camera. Hmm. All right, let's do this. Um, why don't we have the next person while I take care of this? Because I cannot start the video. Or uh, freedom, I think we should carry on. Uh, that's okay. It's okay. Okay. All right. So um, sorry about that. Um, I was uh, I was actually on a VR call. Sometimes you know it it uh, it does take some time to to get uh, some of this. So where were we? So we were talking about uh, we heard uh, some of the key lessons about entrepreneurship uh, from Mr. Can, and I think I agree with all of that. That you need to be um, an expert. So it is fundamentally important to have entrepreneurship education uh, because we know that it is a fundamental driver of economic value and job creation all over the world. So whether this manifests itself, you know, in the form of a startup idea that you might have or as a regenerating force you know, within an established company. Entrepreneurship to me is about acting under conditions of uncertainty and in the absence of calculable risk. Over here on my screen, you can see that I have put together what I'm gonna call a knowledge graph. A knowledge graph is an AI engine that sort of helps you connect things by concept. And let me tell you about the existence of this knowledge graph. I had a 15 year old girl and her name is Miriam Hart. And Miriam struggled with being able to simply look at a Google search because she was dyslexic. And she said, well, what if what if I could create a new kind of search engine, one that was visual in nature, one that allowed me to quickly connect concepts without having to look at a whole long list from Google. And it would help people to understand anything. I said, well, I think that will be game changing. And Miriam said, well, I'm in 10th grade and I'm failing all my classes in New York. Can I do moonshot thinking? I said, well, why not? So Miriam proposed building what we are seeing right now called you know. Do you know? She did start. And she put together some sort of idea over here that let's say that I wanted to actually see how entrepreneurship and education would actually connect with each other, like you are seeing right now. By using all the moonshot tools, this 15 year old girl from New York who was failing mathematics and everything, was able to build something that I believe is actually much better than Google. Because by clicking on that connection there, I am now able to see how the concepts there are connected. In fact, I can see that if I'm looking at entrepreneurship, there's all kinds of things that come with entrepreneurship. You're looking at market segmentation. You're looking at composite good. What is composite good, right? So in economics, it's a demand for a good, right? That's often a focus of change. So a composite good is an abstraction that's used in, in economics that represents all the goods in the relevant budget besides the ones in question. So by using this engine, you are quickly able to see snippets of what 
really entails entrepreneurship. And of course, of course, you can expand the concept as you desire. And there are many, many things that you can do with this search engine. So Miriam was able to build something at 15 and by 16, her invention and innovation was acquired for $25 million. Why am I saying this is important? She discovered how to exploit opportunities and mobilize the resources that were necessary to act on them. She approached Munsha and she expressed her need. As an entrepreneur, she was able to unleash the forces of creative destruction in ways that transformed an existing industry that even challenged the likes of Google. You see, entrepreneurs can also serve as arbitrators capable of bringing markets back into competitive equilibrium. So <clears throat> some of the things that I was going to talk about have been covered. So we'll try and keep this very brief. Not only are the right skills and capabilities required, the right outlook too is required. So you need to have a particular heart and a particular passion, a particular belief in your idea. Take for example, Elvis. I'm going to talk to you about what Elvis did. Elvis is also another moonshot thinker. When Elvis approached, he came to me with an idea. And the idea was, well, what if there was a way for me to create a new kind of mask? And that was in 2017. What if I could do that? Because my mother is struggling with breathing in China. At this point, Elvis was only 16 years old. And I said, well, what will that take? What will that take? And Elvis was like, well, it would take me to be able to put together a plan on how to create a new kind of model. And over here, you can see this is Elvis right here. Um, and this is Miriam. Um, and this is uh, Esther Wojcicki. Esther is the godmother of Silicon Valley where Google was founded in her garage. So Elvis was 13 at the time. And so we began to think about her moonshot process. And what was fascinating about Elvis's process was that he wanted to build an entirely different product. And that product would transform how people in China uh, will be able to use masks. And so what we did as Moonshot was think about some ways that he could deal with that particular issue. Now, he also left New Jersey and came over here in Silicon Valley where I am. The first meeting with him, which was here, I brought in some experts, including some of the medical doctors within the Moonshot program. 
And this mission here was to protect people from environmental pollution with zero energy waste. And it only took about three months later where we were able to put him in a moonshot, moonshot lab um, within the Stanford University Nanofabrication Lab. And he published an article in one of the moonshot journals within the Stanford Press at the Designership Institute. Ultimately, as a high school student, he was able to win awards from Intel and was accepted to schools like MIT and Brown. So Elvis says, Freedom, what should I do? I need to continue this. Should I go to MIT or Brown? I said, I cannot tell you what to do, but what I can tell you is that your mission to impact lives is really important. And so Elvis actually stopped and said, I choose not to go to MIT and Brown and I'll spend my entire year working on my mission. Basically told MIT and Brown that I was not going to do that. And three months later, he was named in Forbes 30 under 30 for social entrepreneurship. He became the youngest listed there. He became the, long, the youngest listed there. And as you heard from Ken, uh, he suggested that you should try and become a thought leader in entrepreneurs and in entrepreneurship. And Elvis was, I made him a co-director in one of the journals on environmental science within the designership press at Stanford. And because part of the entrepreneurship is being able to publish and become a thought leader. And the designership press was founded as a moonshot program where students try to redefine science research publication and allow anyone to publish in peer reviewed research. That is what moonshot thinking is about. Now, what did I learn? What did I learn working with these young people? There is a trick to the madness. And that trick is about a state of being. As an entrepreneur, you want to be timely. Elvis and Miriam, chose to do things in a particular time period where they even rejected going into some of the most prestigious schools in the United States. It's about being responsible. And being responsible is really not about being accountable. Being responsible is like knowing that you are caused in the matter, that nothing that happens doesn't happen without you. And the backbone of all of that is integrity. And integrity, again, in this particular case, is not like a moral issue. It's actually a workability issue. Think of it as a chair, a chair that you're sitting on right now. It's designed to function as a chair. It has the integrity of a chair. Suppose you took out two of his legs, that chair will become somehow wobbly. It stops working. It's about integrity of your mission. You follow your mission and you work hard, even if it's tough. A moonshot is doing something that is fundamentally difficult to do, but you do it anyhow with integrity. And that is how you get to change the world. It's really also about coordination. Being able to coordinate and master your 
field and being able to marshal your resources. Having mentors, that's what it's going to take. And it's about kudos. Being able to really celebrate your successes. You know, entrepreneurship skills, such as the ability to effectively pitch your ideas, provide the sort of inspirational leadership that can attract talent like Moonshot does and develop the operational wear withal necessary to expand a business. Now you may be wondering what really happened to this particular idea. So Elvis became known when the virus came as the mass entrepreneur because he followed at 13 his passion. Four years later, at 17, he had solved a global challenge. In fact, Oxy2, which was his initial idea, became the subject of conversation within one week of the pandemic. I mean, ultimately, his idea was acquired for $20 million. So he called me again and said, what do I do? I said, I cannot tell you what to do, but what I can tell you is you probably want to keep your intellectual property, keep the IP because Oxy2 is still in development, but if the 20 million is going to save lives, I will take that because right now we're in the middle of the pandemic and that was your mission. Now he is being you know, invited to talk about that moonshot journey. You, as a young person, also has the ability to do that. Nothing says you cannot accomplish your moonshot, especially now that we do have things like Moonshots Junior to support you on that journey, to help you make the connections, to help you figure out how to bring that trick into life. Nothing stops you. Today is the opportunity for you to develop those entrepreneurial skills, for you to redefine and develop that operational wherewithal that is necessary to build a multi-million dollar, a billion dollar, perhaps even a trillion dollar business. Just as important as the imparting of skills it, uh, that Moonshot has in nurturing this entrepreneurial mindset is also important to understand that young people in general need to become more adept at seeing opportunities where others see problems. Both Elvis and Miriam saw problems and turned them into opportunities. Before they even started college, they were able to build businesses that are now worth closer to $120 million each. Governments, private companies, universities, incubators and accelerators are all increasingly looking to cultivate the next generation of entrepreneurs. And the number of US-based startup accelerators 
designed to support early stage companies with benefits like education and mentorship jumped from 16 to more than 170 between 2008 and 2021. And this is according to the Brookings Institute. Now, they're not all the same. Moonshot is different because Moonshot demands and empowers you to look at things that are seemingly impossible. Things that are seemingly impossible to solve. Moonshot is looking at the economic impact analysis, the production function, as well as the human capital by creating a process where you transform curious minds. Many educational programs are taking an increasingly innovative approach to develop a richer human capital and fostering greater entrepreneurship. So human capital is basically a measure of the economic value of an employee's skill set, And that's what schools are doing. Now, if you look about it, and if you think about it, there are three primary aspects and how they're being emphasized is, first, is very, very important. And I'm gonna go through those three. The first one is developing individual mindsets on the personal, psychological, and transformative journey that an individual must take in order to form the firm convictions and volition required to pursue an entrepreneurial life. Like Moshe, presenting relatable role models and experts that are as similar as possible to prospective entrepreneurs in order to break through these mental blocks. The representation of role models and mentors who are minority like myself, as an African-American, who are women, uh, who are members of underrepresented groups as part of this process is essential. Second, entrepreneurial programs like Moonshots are underscoring the importance of developing appropriate skills and best practices by providing you with a controlled or even a mediated environment that can give you as a budding entrepreneur a truly immersive learning experience that stimulates your entrepreneurial journey. Finally, Moonshot is about recognizing the importance of introducing prospective entrepreneurs like yourselves to local communities of investors, mentors, companies, and experts. We acquaint the prospective entrepreneur with the broader mechanism at play at both a national and regional level that can be leveraged to support entrepreneurship and growth and introduce you as young people to the tools and resources necessary to increase the scale of your ventures. Now, if we look at the model here that I put together, I call it the trick model. I call it the trick model. I have looked at this model for a while. Being timely is about when sometimes luck does come into play. Being responsible is about why. What does it matter? 
for you to do it. What's your mission? And being coordinated is about the how. And kudos really is about being kind to who? Perhaps to yourself. Perhaps to others. And that, to me, matters. In fact, Elvis, Miriam, and many other Moonshot students in the last three years that I, have worked on a program. I see them. Actually, we are running a little short on time. We have some more speakers there. Uh, so okay. just, if you can quickly end up the session so we can have other speakers. Uh, Actually, I am done. Yeah, thank you. So, so finally, it's about, you know, that trick. I want, what I want to leave with you guys is the trick. So I want to appreciate you all uh, and thank you for your time. Thank you, Freedom, thank you. for thank such you. an informative session. Next, we have with us Mr. Ashutosh Jurele. He is the busy bee of Moonshot Jr. Based out of London, Ashutosh has, has deep rooted skills in enterprise solution and business architecture with 20 plus years of experience in IT, retail, and supply chain. Also the co-founder, he's an e-commerce expert. He also plays a key role in guiding students to lead on e-commerce platforms where they can launch their products and services. Now I'd like to hand it over to Mr. Ashutosh Jirene. Thanks, thanks, Tirat. And uh, I would like to thank everyone, Ken, Day, Alok, and uh, Freedom for such a wonderful uh, session today. I won't take too much time. Uh, and like, well, I'll just uh, talk about a few things here. One is uh, like, what is this course uh, uh, title all about? Uh, we call it Entrepreneurship and Leadership Development Program. Why not Entrepreneurship Development Program or Leadership Development Program? So before we do that, uh, I would like to have a poll there. Uh, like, are entrepreneurship and leadership same thing? Uh, so like, uh, Tirat or Shruti, if we can do a quick poll if the, uh, with the people, that would be great, please. please. So the poll link is in the chat. Uh, you can click on the link and submit your answers. The question is... Let's I make it to... quick. Let's not spend more than 20 seconds on this. Everybody is getting a bit impatient. Okay, so uh, we have got 20 seconds. Everyone quickly... Uh... Come on, let's go. We have got a lot of people there. Let's see, like with the entrepreneurship and leadership, are they synonyms? Are they different? How do we see each one of them? So that's like the reason for asking that question or that poll is because that defines our program, the Entrepreneurship and Leadership Development Program. It gives you a glimpse of what we are going to learn or good, the journey that we are going to go through in uh, next nine to 10 weeks with you all. Okay, so we have got majority of uh, no's with 26 no's and 11 yes. That's perfect. I think like, yeah, we, we, we got what we were looking for. Yes. So like the people who said no, uh, yes, there is a very subtle difference between entrepreneurship and uh, uh, leadership. And that's why we have called this program as entrepreneurship and leadership development program, because both of these skills are very, very, very important from future of work perspective, from industry 4.0 perspective. So entrepreneurship is all about the skills that you have, the mindset that you have, wherein you are trying to find solution, an impactful solution, the solution that creates or disrupts, uh, or disrupts a norm. Leadership skills are all about influencing people to achieve the goal. So both these skills are very, very important when we talk about where we want to see the future generation uh, to be. Like in this session, like in the next nine, eight to nine weeks, you guys will be talking to a um, lot of uh, industry leaders, subject matter experts, uh, um, the like not just uh, like from uh, technical or uh, uh, leadership side of it, but also the people who have done things, they have achieved something. So it will be opportunity for you to 
talk about uh, their entrepreneur journey to get uh, advice from them talk to them about uh, how did they achieve what they uh, sought from what was the journey like about what were the obstacles like in these nine sessions like what we will be going through is uh, like how do you develop self confidence about like what the ideas that you have you will be developing resilient mindset there are why people you know, certain people persist and why some fall short uh, or uh, fail in a way like how do you deal with obstacles and convert them into opportunities we will be talking about innovative mindset or developing innovative mindset because the solutions that we'll be working through with you they will help you uh, think like an innovator we will be talking about uh, like the initiative taking capabilities the curiosity uh, to solve a problem and we will be going through whole raft of sessions around uh, design thinking uh, for you to come up with your solution so like we will go into the details of that but like what is important is like you have to take both entrepreneurship and leadership hand in hand the goal of entrepreneur is to create impact to disrupt to create goal of leader is to influence both should go in hand in hand leaders think from future more of a generation changes uh, entrepreneurs think about from short term to long long term so you have to combine both of these now the most important uh, aspect that we would like to work on with you is it's not just about thinking out of the box we will be thinking or eliminating the box altogether so like uh, go ahead think about it uh, there are no boundaries we will be going through and absolutely awesome um, experiential learning experience and i'll keep this short and uh, like i'll hand it over to tier back to you so uh, thanks thanks everyone i have a good uh, nine weeks ahead of you that's quite quick and but uh, thanks ashutosh you have given a complete insight of what exactly the program is going to be uh, and how they are going to be benefited by the program thank you very much now uh, next with us uh, the co-founder of moonshot junior that is vishal malhotra vishal has started multiple businesses and has been leading eq2 as cto in the past eq2 is one of the major companies providing solutions for medical devices management and facilities engineering in healthcare organizations all over the globe his acumen both as an entrepreneur and as a technical expert has been a major contribution in the foundation and shaping of moonshot junior over to you sir thank you thank you shruti um so first of all um thank you everyone till now and day uh, really manifestation is what we are looking for now along with entrepreneurship skills and we want all the new generation from india become the new entrepreneurs of the world and may reshape the world as we know it it and you know first of all for manifestation i have a question for every everyone how many of you have seen the movie the secret and shruti if you can open the poll question and let's see how many of students and teachers and all other uh participants have seen this movie the secret okay here's the link so just uh give responses on if you have seen the movie secret and here are the results yeah maximally the news okay we have got 8% yes okay so we see a lot of no's um so let's do one thing let me share my screen and just show you a, a brief trailer of this movie and let's see throughout history all the great minds all the great leaders all the great achievers can you hear the sound also ah uh, yes it's completely audible okay it's something in common
The voice is lost. I don't know whether it is for me or for everyone. Yeah, the voice is not there. And now the great glimmering of truth can be revealed again. Yeah, no, now we can hear. Uh, is there something, their problem? Uh, so the voice is not there. Uh, voice is not it keeps on breaking, I guess. Okay, the sound is breaking. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I think uh, we shall try one more time. It might work. Okay, let me try again and let me maybe increase the volume also a little bit. All the great leaders, all the great achievers. There's something. Yeah, it's working. I wish I have lost the volume again. I think there could be problem with the network or something. So sound quality is better or no? No, no, we can't hear you at all. Okay. So maybe I can forward the link to um, Shruti, if you can play that. Sure, sir. So let me put that in the chat to Shruti. Okay, Shruti, see if you can play that from India. I don't know whether there will be restriction or not. If you can try to share it. Yeah, just give me a second. Okay. Throughout history, all the great minds, all the great leaders, all the great achievers, there's something in common. Now the great glimmering of truth can be revealed again. Do you know this secret gives you everything you want? Happiness, health, and wealth. You can have, do, or be anything you want. I've seen many miracles take place in people's lives. Financial miracles, miracles of physical healing, mental healing, healing in relationships. All of this happened because of knowing how to apply the secret. Shruti. So have you, uh, you have all have seen this video now, the trailer, what it is trying to say in the movie, if you can dream it, you can think it, you can manifest first the reality. So the manifestation of the reality is in your hand, in your thought. And now it's not so simple. You have to have dedication, resilience, uh, and motivation to do the things. Um, when you dream something, the main thing you have to remember is don't try to think what you don't want to be. Just think what you want to be. Whatever you think, whether you want to be or not to, want to be, if you think about that, suppose I don't, don't want to be uh, doing a job. So if I every day say I don't want to do a job, I might end up doing a job because I'm thinking of job every day. So the thinking converts into manifestation um, and it, there are a lot of different things. Now, a lot of students, like you are young, you are all students. You might think, oh no, this, these are all, how can I believe it? It's all something in question mark. Like we are all studying science. 
So we have to believe from scientific perspective also. So, you know, I will not show a lot of video for that, but I will just show you a few clips without the audio. Uh, let me share my screen again. Okay, so this is a session by Dr. Dean Redin. Uh, so this is about the manifestation of the particle from uh, wave, wave and particle uh, duality. So this is double slit experiment. So first of all, before I start this, uh, I want a poll question. How many of you have heard about quantum manifestation and double slit experiment? And if Shruti, you can open the poll. The question is, how many of you have heard about quantum manifestation or double slit experiment? So yeah. Shruti, if you can yeah. ask that question in the poll. Here we go. Again, there is a link to give your inputs about the question. Uh, do you know about the terms uh, quantum manifestation and double slit experiment? And or anything. Okay, let so me share if the you result. can share the poll result yeah. also. Okay, that's good. A lot of lot of yes are there. That's great. Um, so, okay, let's let me share my screen now. So there was an experiment done by Dr. Dean Redding in California, and what he did. Let me say. Let me forward it a little bit. These are all different scientists who believe some kind of extra physical thing actually is impacting the reality. And this is a standard double slit experiment when a particle, whether a photon or an electron is passed through an area where there are two different slits, it end up in a, this kind of a pattern, which is a wave interference pattern, if no one is looking at it. So what happened is, if someone look at it, either due to us adding a sensor to it and getting the information from the experiment, which has a lot of different question mark with the sensor. So all, all the physics books basically shows us what happened when we add the sensor. The wave converts into a particle. But now it's not just a sensor. If we are adding a human element who are just thinking that they're looking at that particular uh, electron or photon passing through the double slate, it also changed the outcome. Now, how they look, think about that, there are different ways they did the experiment, but the result, if you see, okay, if you see the result here, the red one are the one who were meditators. If we, we call the people who were doing meditation for more than eight years, and ask them to do that. Their results are very impressive. They actually convert the wave into a particle without adding a sensor. So I'm not actually telling you the complete story about how the equipment are set up because that will take a long time. In summary, I'm giving you the outcome of the experiment. The blue dots are the non-meditator. In non-meditator, it normally rarely worked. It never worked. They were not able to convert the wave to a particle, but the meditators always were in some degree, not like 100%, but the results were very fascinating and very interesting. So that normally tells us that our thought, our mind power can convert a non-existing thing, a wave or potential potentiality of existence of particle to a particle. So if that can happen, what, what cannot happen? If we can really convert something that does, does not exist to the existence by just thinking, then what, uh, what, what are the potential for us? Unlimited. So what Dave was saying, the manifestation, if you can dream it and you start working for that in the continuous fashion, you will end up creating the reality, the universe, the power of the universe will be working with you to convert that into a reality. So that's what we all want here. 
We want you to learn a lot of stuff. You have to have re resilience. That means you have to know that you don't, you cannot give up. If you give up, you might be very close to the success, but you know, you gave up and then you were never able to succeed. So that happened in most of the stories. People give up. Don't give up, continue on the path. You might have to tweak the path. That's okay. That's, you will learn in this course uh, how to think, how to work. But you know, your meditation that they said, doing the inner engineering, that will really help because you can see the result, the red particles. Those are people who were doing meditation. They were having more control of, on their mind and thought to convert the possibility into the reality. That's what it helps. So we, I, I ex, uh, expect everyone to do the inner engineering course and that will help you all a lot. I have a lot of stories for myself that where I was able to convert something by just thinking about that and that came the reality in the future. So there are a lot of different uh, things that happen in my life and everyone who is successful, they have that in their life, mostly. I will not say all, but most of them. So that's what we want from all of you. And I will just end my session here and I will give it back to uh, Shruti. Thank you, sir. That was wonderful to hear about quantum manifestation. <laughs> I've heard it about for the first time. I am myself speak about that. Okay. So, um, just, uh, also, um, I would like to add something over here. Should be just a minute. I'll take a break. So, uh, thank you, Vishal, sir, for such an inspiring uh, session. And the main takeaway for today's day should be that. Uh, if we can dream it, we can definitely achieve it, as Vishal said. So you need to keep on trying, keep on doing things, and definitely you can achieve it. And uh, with that being said, I would like to conclude today's session. And uh, we would be looking forward to meeting you all on 13th September with our session one of Entrepreneurship and Leader De Leadership Development Program. Thank you all for joining for today. Everyone sitting here as some or the other skills, we aim to empower you and help you in finding your true calling with our program that emphasizing essential life skills such as critical thinking, empathy, and problem solving. Looking forward to the program and your participation. Thank you. Wish you all a great learning and successful journey. Thanks, everyone.